Hello, well I'm back at the Weald and Downland Museum today and it's a lovely setting. I'm actually doing some spoon carving here, but I thought I'd take the opportunity to have a look at Tyndall's Cottage, which was built about 1720. And in its original site, it had a nice little small holding of about 26 acres. And it's one more of these buildings which has been rescued from the building of a reservoir. In this case, it was Buell Water Reservoir and Tyndall's Cottage was actually taken down when the reservoir was built and the actual building left in store. Anyway, it's fairly recently been re-established and they've tried to construct a site a little bit, perhaps how it might have looked at the time and it's a very attractive little small holding arrangement. It has one of those wonderful long cat slide tiled roofs there and the views from the cottage are lovely. I enjoyed having a little look around the garden and there's quite a few bits of wood stores and little animal holdings, a very nice, least sturdy made bench there, and of course, some pigs. And they were enjoying the nice sunny sunshine. This cottage had been in store for nearly 40 years, so the reservoir was built about 1974, and this building was rescued, dismantled, and stored in a museum. On rebuilding, I think they probably had to add in quite a few additional beams from similar old buildings and probably bricks as well. But where possible, they actually use oak, because it's an oak frame, from the same area of the cottage. So freshly felled oak was added in and spliced in to make the building good. So it's a lovely restoration all in all. The cottage has a huge stone and brick chimney and it's an incredible, again, incredible thermal mass. I guess once you got that heated up in the winter, it will probably help a drafty cottage keep a bit warmer. And downstairs, there are four rooms downstairs. And there's a kitchen with a sort of bread oven by the fireplace. And you can see right up the chimney, a buttery, a brew house, which contains a, a furnace or what I used to see as a copper and a milk house. And then upstairs there are two rooms. And there's also to the side, a kitchen chamber and buttery chamber. And there's a small great attic, which was probably used as a, as a storeroom. I can remember the old coppers as a child, actually, and you still see them from time to time in places. But here's a, a look at the fireplace area. And the size of these fireplaces, I can remember as a child, actually, one or two of my friends having these. And you'd sit in the sort of fireplace to keep warm in the winter. They were so large. And you can see right up that chimney. I guess it would be fairly easy to clean a chimney like that given its massive size and sometimes said it had little benches. I like this wooden chair it had been made by the master carpenter at the museum and it was very nicely done. You can see all the lovely tool marks which I always like to see and I like the way the legs were continuous up through the arms and up through the back. You could imagine someone making that who lived in the cottage and having a nice chair, a nice simple bit of furniture. And of course, you look into the, the detail and you see there's nice iron work as well. A nice bit of blacksmithing on that hinge with some nice uh, rose headed nails. And you can imagine them sitting there smoking their pipes by the far side on a wet, cold day. So here's a little bit of detail about the cottage as it originally looked and its relocation. It's all sort of difficult to describe, but I always get a very warm feeling as I enter these old buildings. And I think it's probably partly because it reminds me a little of my childhood. My school teacher used to live in a house just like this, and it didn't have any electricity. Um, used to be a pump at the side. And I can remember even as a child being a bit surprised, the fact that there was no electricity there, because our own house did have electrics. <laughs> Uh, but that's how it was. If you go back a few years, back to the 50s and 60s and places and rural country locations. And I mean, I can remember going to Ireland and being a bit surprised the children, some of them weren't wearing shoes. It's a similar sort of thing. Nowadays, you'd probably be a bit surprised at that. But of course, going back, things were a bit different. Again, very nice earthenware pots were on display here. And you get a feel, the museum has actually tried to dress the cottage in the period for when the Tyndalls lived there. So I think it's around a sort of 1750s area that they've tried to theme the cottage on to give you an idea. And there's replica furniture that would reflect a sort of fairly modest living standards of the Tyndall family. And it's all been made by the museum's master craftsman. 
there's a meat cupboard here, store cupboard, and I can remember one of those. As my parents didn't have a fridge initially, and I can remember them having a meat safe with a grill. And I particularly liked these door handles. I can quite distinctly remember those with the finger latches and the side pull. It's very, very standard Kent and Sussex kind of door latching that, but quite effective actually. Going up the little stairway, there was a nice rickety banister just of natural branch wood, but it was actually quite effective and perfectly adequate. It just looked rather nice character. And you go up to this little bedroom area, again, very simply furnished. There was a nice little chest with chip carving sides on it and nice little metal handles, very simple, very effective. Basic bed, again, another little fireplace. I guess the families who lived here would probably be able to get hold of firewood and that's how they could afford to have heated fires but otherwise you know, obviously the cost of heating in the towns was quite an issue for some families. But here we are, a nice little bit of chest, a nice bit of woodwork there, very simple. You can actually just see the plane marks catching the light and I always like to see so the tool to finish on furniture, I personally, I'm not one for great sanding. I, I like to see it like this state where you can actually see the, the markings in the wood. And to the side here is another little bedroom where they've put a baby's uh, crib. And again, you can just imagine a family living here, all being very cozy and probably a lovely place to grow up, I imagine. So I was very pleased to see this cottage and I hope you've enjoyed the little look around. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.